Welcome back, friends, to Studio P, a.k.a. my dining room. Today, a guest drove all the way from Rochester, Minnesota, just to hang out with me, which I think is the furthest a guest has ever traveled specifically to hang out with me, so I am honored. Our guest today has gone viral way more times than me, considering I've literally never gone viral, and I can't wait to hear his stories, because a lot of people don't really know anything about him. If you Google him, it's hard to find. Welcome to the show, React Dut. What the hell? How you guys doing? <laughs> So tell me, in your own words, who are you and what are you passionate about? So my, pretty much me, I'm a social media influencer. Um, I do, I pretty much just make content, you know what I mean? Uh, and basically just show people that just embrace themselves. Yeah. So. Cool. So where did everything start as far as social media stuff for you? Because you're, how old are you? You're way younger than I'm me. I'm 24. Yeah. Yeah. I'm almost 34. So <laughs> <laughs> I grew up before social media was like hardly a thing. For you, it was a thing. So were you already doing social media stuff in middle school, high school? Like when did you kind of get into that? So like it kind of fell onto me. Um, I started out by, I was going on a mango. Um, I was going on like um, different apps like Monkey and the way people react to my face, they're like, oh my God, you ugly as hell. So it's like, <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't take it as a negative way. I decided like, you know what? Um, so I, I, when I started going to comedy shows and started performing, um, I've had like comedians come at me and like roast me. So I thought came in my head, it was like, you know what? I'm a catfish. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I would start, uh, you know, make content and try to go from over this. Yeah, I've never heard of those other apps. Would you say they were Monkey Mango? It's, I don't know what those are. What are those? So it's like it's like a video chatting app. Okay. Uh, yeah, Al Mango just got shut down. I'm like, damn it, that was one of my favorite apps too. <laughs> it sounds like chat roulette <laughs> if you remember what that is. I don't know what. So is it like you just get connected with random people, or how does it really work? So basically, like you just get connected with random people. You go on there and you just um, and with me, it's like I got a unique look. Everybody will come and they'll see my face. They're like, they will. They were like, oh shit, he's ugly. Like they'll act like he never seen, like they never seen me before. Sure. So, so you just like screen record it to be able I, to use that for content? Or yeah, like? I, I either screen record it or just use it for content and everything. Oh, okay, cool. Yep. So when did, did you do, you said you were going to comedy shows. I guess I'm trying to like piece it together. How did, what was the first thing that you posted? Were you going to comedy shows before you started like posting content or were you like trying to be a stand up comedian or hoping to do that at some point? I don't really understand. I tried keep, I tried it. Um, I still need to, I still got a lot of things I need to work on, but I started like going to comedy shows and one of my, uh, I actually went to one of my, um, favorite comedians. He was like my idol, Michael Blackson. Okay. Sure. <laughs> so I went to his comedy show and he roasted me. He was like, I look like under his bed. <laughs> Oh god! <laughs> and I was the first person he picked out the crowd, and he just let me have it. And I'm like, one day I came home, I'm like, you know what? Let me, uh, let me, let me catfish him. Sure. <laughs> so I stole this picture. Oh, it was like a uh, uh, first. I stole some uh, girl's picture on Google. That wasn't working. So I, I was like, you know what? Let me look at his style and see what type of woman he's adding. And a lot of the women that he was adding were like uh, uh, BBWs. So I'm like, okay, you know what? Let me uh, let me go to Google. Came back, I found a, I found the perfect picture, and I found the name. The name went with the picture, and he was like, and at first I was uh, talking to him in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> so he's probably think, you know, I was like, hey, add me, I can show you a little son, son. He was like, oh, he. And the, <laughs> the funny part is he 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 looked at the camera. He goes, Mina underscore Johnson, and then I pop up, and he just goes, motherfucker. <laughs> So that was that was pretty funny. What what made you think to even do that in the first place? Did you record that? Uh, yeah, I got yeah, I got that on recording. Oh, okay. What made you think to um, even do? Th I don't know anybody who makes content from catfishing. That's definitely a unique <laughs> thing to like even try to do. The reason why I did that is because like the way he roasted me at the comedy club, and I'm like, you know what? I gotta get my lip back. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, sure. Let me. Let me roast him. You know what I mean? So yeah. that, that was pretty fun. Was that the first time that you got, cause obviously like bullying and stuff is like a problem all the time, right? For everybody. I'm sure you faced some of that. Mm -hmm. um, but was it that specific comedy show that kind of gave you the thought of, okay, I'm just going to own this and figure out what I can do with this whole thing rather than just like being down upon yourself because this dude was tearing you apart. I don't know. I just always wanted to make somebody laugh. You know what I mean? Yeah, so sure. I was like, as long as I, I don't care what it is, as long as I can make him laugh, it's just, you know what? Let me just be myself, and, right? And uh, nobody can take that away from me. Right? So, How long ago was that that, that, that was, happened? That was like back in like twenty eighteen. 
Oh, this was quite a while ago. Yeah, okay, cool. cool. So then what is the journey? Can you like piece together the general summary of then until now of like how this has evolved into a career for you? Because I know you've had a bunch of different videos go viral for like kind of similar things, mm -hmm. but like how did that kind of work? Well, after the Michael Blackson thing, I started catfishing like uh, more people. Yeah. And I started to see like, oh, this is like, damn, this is really going somewhere. So um, it actually hit me when uh, uh, my childhood celebrities would actually message me and say, hey, I, I would love to work with you. Um, so how yeah. did that happen? What was the I, like because you you posted that first one. Did that just go viral right away or something? Or like, how did these people even figure out who you were and contact you? Which one? Or just any of them. Like, oh, um, I just started, you know, like I said, doing skits, uh, catfish and other celebrities. Um, and that was all on TikTok or on Instagram or um, YouTube? or It was on my like, Instagram live. Oh, on Instagram live. Yep, OK, yep. cool. So you start doing that. Obviously, that builds a following over time. How do you still catfish people if you already have a following on the Internet? Do you just use a totally separate account? I totally use a so totally separate account. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I got a whole account. You know what I'm saying? So that right there actually has opening the door for me i sure. actually got uh funny marco actually <laughs> was another guy um and he was he was shocked <laughs> sure <laughs> it was he's a pretty cool dude you know he brought me out there to atlanta and um i uh, show me uh, show, uh, show me a good time out there so you mm -hmm. catfished this dude and then he brought you to atlanta yep <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> He was like, coming out of Atlanta, he's like, hey, man, let's work. So he was like, okay. And watch a funny Marco uh, as a kid with this one mile video. It was like, damn, like getting that. Yeah. That's what made me wanted to uh, actually sit here and actually chase my career more. That was kind of the time frame where you decided you wanted to make a career out of it? Yep. Oh, okay, cool. So, so how has the career developed? Do you work with like brands and stuff or do you get paid by different like companies to like, how, how is it, how do you make a career out of catfishing people on the internet? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so right now um, I'm starting off for doing skits or like a uh, club will call me up and I'll just go host their clubs and everything. Oh, okay. Yep. So you're doing like kind of stand up type stuff like yep. emceeing events and that kind of thing yep, events and everything MC oh okay cool events i'm still um i got comedy um i'm working on a couple things for yeah. my comedy are so. you trying to stay more in the lane of social media specifically or are you trying to get more into i guess yeah like events and stand up and that type of thing i want to do both you know get into more um since i've been doing social media for so long it's like it's time for me to like you know actually hit the stage yeah what's been the biggest challenge with that because obviously like when you're doing social media a lot of the times i mean catfishing somebody like you have one shot right of recording it but generally speaking with social media you can you know do 50 takes yeah right? you can do 50 you're not I, doing it in front of people you can do 50 100 takes um just though when you hit the stage you better be funny <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah so um my biggest take was like speaking speaking in front of people because yeah. I, I haven't um i haven't like because I'm so used to behind the scenes it's coming out and speaking to actual people it's like it's totally different that's one of the biggest takes yeah public speaking is its own it's, uh, beast that's for sure what's the hardest part about public speaking for you do you like forget what the jokes were that you were gonna go with in the first place like get stage fright in that kind of way that right there so yes so um, I'm different so what I do I um, I improv my uh, I do improv oh so, sure okay yeah so basically I have like I have a set and I'll go out there with that set and I'll improv it. Um, uh, the biggest problem is I'll go out there, I'll see the crowd and I'll forget. <laughs> sure. <laughs> it's like, uh, I'll forget. And then one day I took my cousin's advice. He was like, just go out there and close your eyes. I did that, walk right off stage. <laughs> oh God. How many, if you had to guess, how many different stand up sets have you performed? Like how many times have you gone up on stage and tried to do that by this point? 20 to 30 times I've been on. So you're still super fresh on it. Yeah, still super fresh. Are you still living in, you're from Rochester, Still right? from Rochester. Oh, okay. How come you decide to stay in Rochester? Because things like content, right? Like there's mm -hmm. content houses you go out to LA, which is crazy expensive, but there's not really stuff happening in Rochester as far as that type of thing. And I don't think Rochester is known for its comedy scene in general, is it? You know, that's what I wanted to do. You know what I'm saying? We have a lot of we have a lot of great content creators. You know what I'm saying? Um, you have DZ. Um, we have 25 Drip, who's one of the content creators. Um, in Rochester? Got, yep. In, okay. in, in Rochester. You have D'Angelo, uh, King Funch. You got an artist, Little Mike from the Go. So I just feel like, you know, we could uh, help bring that scene to Rochester.
Yeah. Well, I mean, I think in general, if you can work together as a team, it's going to work so much better because a lot of times out in the Midwest, we're kind of off on our own little islands. Yes. You know what I mean? Like I do this podcast, but there's really nobody else in my area that's doing this. The closest thing would be like Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. So now lately I've been trying to connect with a lot of those guys, which you were also on uh, Waterwave, right? Because that's like... Well, definitely not the same thing as this. This is Wisconsin. That one's more music and Minnesota specifically. And, and they're mm-hmm. different for sure. But we've had, I've had a lot of the same guests kind of recently. What was your experience like on Waterwave? Were you, did you know Ricky before that? Yeah. Uh, we, yeah. I actually worked with Ricky a couple of times. Uh, yeah. I, I know Ricky before that. So, and well, him uh, bringing me on the show was, it was an amazing experience. Yeah. Was that the first time you've done a podcast? That's not the first time I've done a podcast. I spent hard to find information on you besides <laughs> this interview. Where, do, where do people even go to find out stuff about you? Cause like your link in bio doesn't really tell a whole lot oh. about you and your different social media platforms. Doesn't don't really like, they don't have an about me section. That, that, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get that. Um, yeah, probably my uh, social media or um, my Instagram or TikTok. That's that's pretty much it. Yeah, but they don't really tell the story of who you are. Oh. At all. You know what I mean? Like if somebody wants to know more about you other than watching the comedy skits, there's uh-huh. really no resource to figure out much of your story. Like going into this interview, I watched the one that you did with Ricky, but there's like not a whole lot of information out there about who you are. That's, I probably need to <laughs> get that written out. <laughs> it's time, yeah, it's time to time to get an about me uh, page going. I'll get that. I'll get that. I'll get that going. So, so you've been traveling a lot. I'm assuming for doing this content. How has that worked? Who have you been uh, working with? So right now we've been going like on our our tour. I've uh, been traveling. We just got back from Vegas. Oh, you're doing a tour. How is that? How does a tour work for a content creator? It's, so basically, we just go city to city tour. Let them know we're city in. Um, if you want to do like, for example, meet and greets, we do meet and greets. Um, any uh, pictures or business promotions. That, that's what we do. Sure. Do you have somebody like an agent or somebody that lines up all of these stops? Because obviously, like there is money to be made doing that. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of hard to cold call businesses and say, hey, look me up on the Internet. I can bring people here. You know what I mean? Like I know businesses are aware that social media is a valuable resource. But still, it's kind of hard to pitch that type of thing, especially if like they have no idea who you are because you're not from their area. Yeah, that's I I think that that would be like a big challenge. Yeah. You know, but I have also had my friend, uh, also 25, that helps me a lot with this. So I basically so. need to call him and say, you need to handle things <laughs> for me because I don't know how to get any of these business deals going. Yep. yep. <laughs> so it. far, what's been your favorite moment in your comedy career? Favorite moment? Uh, I would have to say um, just traveling, getting to meet new people, you know. How many different states have you been to? Uh, do you guys do this on the road or did you fly? fly <laughs> but I, I mean I, if it's like if it's like a two three hour drive or a five hour drive I'll I'll drive if it's yeah, like yeah. anything more than 10 hours I'm flying <laughs> okay so tell me about this most recent trip that you did how did that like line up they pay for your flight and your hotel and all that to be able to do a signing that seems like kind of hard to get people to pay for um right? no so like for example so, um we, we travel up there yeah. Yep. So it's kind of like a vacation, but we're, we're actually traveling out there for work and building sure. co- building connections. Sure. But you guys invested your own money then yep. into making that type of thing happen. Yep. yep. Cool. Yeah. A lot of people, I feel like, don't realize that as a creator, if you want to make a living, you have to invest in yourself you pretty significantly to. for a long period of time, yes. right? Yes. Like this show, I've been doing four and a half years. I spent a lot of money flying to LA and getting hotel rooms to talk to people. You know what I mean? That I wasn't getting paid for during that whole time frame. I still don't get paid hardly anything. Yeah. But hey. We're here. There's a lot of cool stuff happening in Minnesota. Who are some of your favorite music artists in Minnesota right now? Favorite Minnesota music artists. We got 25 Drip. We got uh, DZ Brazy. We got, uh, his name is Ike. Um, and we got, um, uh, two things. you go about two things. Those are all Rochester people uh, or where in Minnesota? All, Roch- uh, all Rochester people. Dang, dude. Yeah. Rochester's popping. Okay. Who is your favorite artist? Like, who are some of your favorite music artists growing up? My favorite music artist is growing up. I would have to go with uh, MGK was one of them. Well, uh, MGK. Uh, like his rap career? <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Um, MGK, uh, I would have to say, um, what was his name? Nip and... Um, Nipsey Hussle? Nipsey Hussle. Sure. Michael Jackson, too. He was... He was he was he was like one of my biggest idols. I feel like we just skipped like three generations between those, <laughs> between those people. Okay, 
Are you down to do a rapid fire of questions? Yes. Dope. Okay, you ready? So how the rapid fire work? It just means they're going to be short answers. I'm going to ask them and try to off the top of your head, boom, say the answer. All right, gotcha. You good? Yep. Okay, here we go. All right. What's your favorite Girl Scout cookie? Damn. Oh, my God. What's your favorite one? Pick one. Uh, What do you call those? Damn. um, Chocolate chip. Do they make chocolate chip ones? I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay. So you're blind. That's all right. That's all right. If you had any dollar amount to spend on a pair of shoes, what would they be? Uh, Jordans. Which Jordans? Threes. What was your favorite cartoon as a kid? My favorite cartoon, SpongeBob. What about now? It's still SpongeBob. Oh, perfect. See, I was like just old enough that when SpongeBob came out, I thought I was too old for cartoons. So I just missed the wave entirely somehow, which you're never too old for cartoons. Never what was the last TV show that you binged? The 100. Yeah, I didn't watch all that. I watched some of it. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Which is your favorite dog? Uh, German Shepherd. Do you have one? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> What's your most irrational fear? Uh, uh, heights. What's your favorite part of your day? Uh, evenings. Oh. Because you're done with work for the day and you get to turn your phone off? Yeah, because I'm done with work and I get to turn my phone off. <laughs> yeah, right so then. what's your uh, least favorite part of your day? Least favorite part? Having to get up early in the morning. <laughs> what do you have to get up early for? Do you work a regular job? Work, yep. What kind of job do you do? I do. So uh, I'm a server. Oh, okay. Yep. So Breakfast spot? You do uh, like diner? No, so it's an event center. Oh, sick. Okay, cool. Yeah, so you, but events are in the evening, are they not? Uh, some events, like if it's basketball or wrestling, sometimes they'll have them in the morning. And then is there all day? Yeah. <laughs> okay, fair yeah. enough. What's the funniest insult that you've gotten? Oh, damn. <laughs> your teeth are... No, I'm sorry. Um, your gums look like a thong. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, my God. Somebody's um, crushing it. You could go on a date with any celebrity. Who's it going to be? Uh, Lato. What state do you hope to never go back to? What state? Iowa. (laughs) Iowa's tight, dude. People are cool there. What's your biggest pet peeve? Somebody who asks unnecessary questions. Such as what? Give me an example of what an unnecessary question would be. For, hmm. Like if we're doing something, for example, like, or talks unnecessary. Just to fill space. Um, just to fill space. Isn't that kind of what we do with podcasts, though? <laughs> it's like we I mean, do the whole time. I mean, that's a that's a podcast, but like if, it, <laughs> if it's like a car ride and you just talk it, man, like just shut the fuck up. Yeah, just time. plug something in the ox cord. Okay, fair enough. What's what's the best style trend right now? Best style trend. You know what? The ambush zip tie. <laughs> what is that? It's a zip tie that I. Just, it's a it's a um zip tie. That's like eight hundred dollars. <laughs> like for real, it's eight hundred dollars. Yep. Why? I don't know. <laughs> People <laughs> buy anything. Did you? I saw a video you made with one. Was yep. that with an actual one, or you just use regular zip? Nah, I just use a regular zip tie. <laughs> Fake. Just kidding. <laughs> What's the best thing about Minnesota? The people. Why? They're cool. Like they're, everyone's just nicer here. Yeah, everybody's. Yep, they're nice, cool. It's clean. Um, it's clean. Very clean. In comparison to Vegas and LA or Atlanta, yeah, Minnesota is extremely clean, especially Rochester. Rochester's dope. What's the worst thing about Minnesota? Damn. Uh, I really don't know. Nothing? Dude, I'm going to say the winters. Oh, yeah, winters. Thank you. <laughs> winters suck. <laughs> Who's your favorite content creator that if you could make a bunch of videos with, you would? Damn, that's a bunch. You got DC, you got Fat Boy, you got Funny Marco. Um, uh, you got 25, you have, that's a lot. <laughs> she has Myron. Who is your least favorite content creator? Least favorite content creator. Uh, should I put that out there? <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm trying to call you out. Call him out. Come on. It's got to be somebody. Damn. Nobody? No, nah, I don't got a least favorite content creator. Oh, man. All right, fine. Who's the funniest person you can think of? The funniest person I can think of? Uh, probably, um, my camera guy. 25 the funniest person <laughs> <laughs> apparently apparently he needs to go put out a stand-up set if, if you could work with any brand what would it be um gap <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh i could see the campaign right now <laughs> oh my god what would your dream car be if you if money didn't matter what would you get lamborghini Urus. if your house is on fire and you can only save one thing. What is it going to be? 
I don't know. I, <laughs> what, what's your most prized possession? You got nothing? My most prized possession at my house. Um, probably my computer because it has all my, uh, has all my everything in it. My laptop. You don't have things saved on a separate hard drive? No, nah, everything on my laptop. Oh my God. Dude. <laughs> well, let me learn you something here. Go get a hard drive, my dude, because things happen. You should definitely back that stuff up. I'm going to get a hard drive. Yeah. That's um, what you're going to do right after this is get, <laughs> get a hard drive. Get a hard drive. Oh my God. So let's talk about goals a little bit. What are the plans for the upcoming after this? Because right now you're traveling a little bit, but you're kind of investing your own money on it. Obviously, like you're trying to grow social media numbers. You're trying to do some stand up, but like what's on the agenda of what you're going to be doing? What I want to do is I want to become an actor and producer. So, and my, actually my goal is to start my own foundation called Find the Gift. Okay. Explain what is, what would the Find the Gift thing So be? basically the Find the Gift would be like, so eventually i want to own my own treatment center and have like skylines raceways um just to show people that's more than life than just drugs and alcohol oh sure okay what inspired that is that something that you had dealt with in the past or in dealt the family with, or anything dealt or? in the past uh uh lost a lot of people um oh, sure trying to get people out the streets and and um basically help people find their gifts and find out what they want to do sure you got to check out sam miller if you haven't he's a comedian from olympia washington that i interviewed recently but he um was homeless and a drug addict for a long time and he's been in recovery now for i forget how many years a long time at this point but his whole career kind of came from doing that he was like in uh treatment centers and everything and started public speaking and that turned into now he's crushing as a stand-up comedian so how do you get into acting and producing if you're in rochester minnesota like, what's even the strategy for that? Do you send, like, video clips to people? I feel like it would be really hard to do from Minnesota, right? So, yeah, it's really hard. So, um, what I would do would, uh, I'd look for anywhere. If anybody shoot a movie here in Minnesota, I'll send out in a thing and see. How do you even find out about movies being shot in Minnesota? Well, it's either water melt or, uh... I just look through the internet or I'll travel to certain places. Dude, I want to get tapped in on this list. I'm trying to act more, man. I acted in one music video. That's crazy. That's it. <laughs> and all I did uh -huh. was make out with this girl in a hot tub for three minutes. Wow. Yeah. And then I had to do it twice because they wanted a second take of it just in case. That's crazy. That's my entire <laughs> acting career. <laughs> but I'm trying to do some other um, kind of acting content. All right. I have a couple gifts for you. Yes. Yeah, dude. Because you drove all the way here from Rochester. Thank you. Do you drink coffee? Yes. Sweet. I, I have this coffee for you Ooh. from Minimum Wage Tim. This one is from Honduras, but he's actually a Minnesota dude. Oh, from Honduras? That's where the coffee's sourced. It's a boutique coffee company. It's just my buddy Tim. He went to school in Eau Claire, but he lives in Minneapolis. He makes uh, music, and he has his own coffee brand. I'm and he's somewhere over in Asia at the moment. That's crazy. Yeah, I'm, I'm on vacation for like a month. I'm about to check it out. Yeah, so that's all for you. And then I'm excited to try this. So Mayana chocolates are the best chocolates in the world. Literally, these are the best ones in the world. We're going to find, are you down to try a chocolate bar? Yeah, I can try a chocolate Hell bar. Hell yeah. So these are from Spooner, Wisconsin, actually. Wisconsin has a lot of cool shit going on. And they literally just dropped these off for me. So I'm going to have a bite. You should have a bite. All right. I can have a bite. That's what I'm saying, man. My own chocolates. These things look ridiculous. These are the kitchen sink bar. It's a, it's a big ass piece of chocolate. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, you don't need to eat the whole thing in one bite. You don't oh, go man. crazy. Oh. That's pretty good pretty good let me see oh <laughs> is that oh my god that's really good that's wild um, i don't know how spooner wisconsin has a chocolate factory but apparently they do okay and you can go to myanachocolates.com and use promo code passion for 25 percent off if you want one of these delicious bars did you make music in the past? Have you put out songs? I feel like you did. Yes, I put. I have two songs, and I got one on the way, so that'd be three. I have my song called "Shake It," and then I have "Hold Time." <laughs> what <are> the, <laughs> describe what your music is like? What were the, what were the goals with it, too? Uh, I was just bullshitting. Are I'm they like, like comedic? Uh, no, nah, they're more like like club music. Yeah, like club music. You know what I'm saying? So, do you aspire to play shows and stuff or ever perform do you ever perform those yes i have performed those a couple of times when uh, and where like how does that even line up so in rochester i opened for the yin yang twins uh, <laughs> what <yeah. laughs> how did that you, how how in the world does that happen uh little mike for the go um he's actually an up uh up and coming uh uh artist too 
Um, in Rochester? In Rochester. Rochester. So he was like, hey, you want to open up for the... One day he came with me, like, hey, you want to open up for the Yang Yang Twins? I'm like, bet, let's do it. <laughs> so you just played one song then? I did... Uh, we did uh, two songs. So I did my song, and then he did his song whole time, and we got a song together. Oh, word. And they performed in Rochester somewhere? Yep, they at the Mail Service Center. And did, so did he get set? Yep. He get set up to do it, and then he just like invited you on, kind of a thing. Yep, 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 yep. Dude, that's like iconic for you to like only have a couple songs out and then yeah. be able to do that. I feel like you skipped a lot of steps to be able to do that. <laughs> that's crazy. So that that was uh, that was fun getting to open up and sharing the backstage with the Ying Ying Twins. Dude, so. yeah, I bet I would love to do that. So, did you hear about Reverb Festival this year? What's that? So it's a music festival that happened last year, but it was like emo and pop punk, punk music. It was a one day thing. There's like plain white tees and stuff, but they expanded it this year. It's two days, August 16th and 17th. Um, but they have a whole day of hip hop. Yeah. Wow. It's all like throwback people, like people I grew up with. So it's like Mike Jones. Um, right. I want to say it's uh, Bubba Sparks, Genuine, um, Young Jock, and then the headliners T.I. Oh, fun fact. I actually opened for T.I. back in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like the same song? Uh no, no, it wasn't a song, it was comedy. It was at a comedy club. Um, shout out to Funny Marco. Um, he was the one, he was like, <clears throat> We're going on stage. And he was like, uh Tom was right, he's like, You're going on stage. He was like, You're gonna open for somebody, but I I'm, I'm not gonna tell you who. So and T I walked through the door and I was shocked because that was like one of my uh, idols uh in comedy. I didn't even know T I did comedy. Yeah, he started doing comedy. Like recently, or what? what? He, when did he, he? He his career start out in comedy. I don't. What do you mean? Uh, so after he stopped doing music, he jumped into the comedy. Now he's doing comedy. I don't know if he's still doing it, but um, back in Atlanta, like in twenty uh, twenty twenty two or twenty 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 one ar- around that area. Jesus Christ, dude! You're having like the most ridiculous experiences. I don't understand how that even <laughs> works. Like, I'm excited to be able to meet Ti. That's crazy. But I'm not going to be able to open for him. Hopefully, I can get him to sit down and do an episode of the show with me. But I so, mean, probably a five minute thing if I can convince him at all. But anyways, that's going to be coming to uh, Eau Claire. So, wow. super excited about that because I, I feel like that whole era is like making a huge comeback right now. It is. We just got to get Paul Wall to come up here. Paul <laughs> that's who I want to see really bad. So, if you could throw a music festival in the Midwest, who would you invite? In the Midwest, they don't have to be a Midwest artist. I'm just saying, if you could throw a music festival, because Soundset's no longer right. So, if you could throw one, what what would the or who would be there? Who would be the artist? Who am I bring? Probably Nelly. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say Nelly, Ti, Drake, um, Little Uzi. Um, he's another. Uh, what's his name? Damn. I forgot his name, but he's he's he's, he's pretty good. I, I mean, that's not a good description for me to know who he is. <laughs> My bad. I gotta look. There's just one guy. He's pretty good. Do you know who I'm talking about? Damn, I, forgot, <laughs> no. I forgot his name. I would definitely bring Chief Keat. Yeah. Okay, so I always ask this question on every episode. When you do things that you're passionate about for a living, such as comedy, creating content, all that kind of stuff, you get to have really unique experiences that usually aren't financially driven, but they're like why it's putting worth putting all the work in. Can you share a story of a unique experience that happened to you that you're really grateful for? Basically, uh, going out there and meeting uh, Little Duvall and getting to hang out with them backstage. Where was that? Going out where? In, Tell me the story in about Minneapolis. So after I catfished Michael Blackson. Yeah. Um, he actually, uh, he, fun, fun fact, he was coming, actually coming to Minnesota. He was like, hey, come to my show and uh, come kick, uh, come have fun uh, the back, uh, backstage with us. Was that the day that he catfished you or is this like a follow up after you it, already knew him you're talking about? It was a follow up after I catfished him. So, oh, word. Yep. So that was a pretty cool experience. Another one was um, like being with Funny Marco and... Um, him giving me the chance to put me in this movie. You're going to be in a movie. Yep. What's the movie? What uh, can you tell us? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I, it hasn't been out yet, but it's on the way. Okay. Well, dude, thank you so much for coming on the show. This yes. was really fun. I appreciate you driving all the way from Rochester because that you. is like a long ass drive. It's only an hour and 45 minutes. Yeah, it's not horrible. <laughs> well, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for joining us for this episode of The Passion Pod. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. We'll see you soon.